I'm really excited about today's video because I feel like it's been a little while since we've done something like this but for the first time in 2024 I am going to be participating in and trying to complete our fantasy bingo. <laughs> So if you're unfamiliar with our fantasy bingo, I was too up until last year. Apparently this has been running for, I think they said like 10 years, it's somewhere around that. But last year I saw a bunch of people post TBRs for this. I didn't have any space in my content schedule and I didn't want to be late to the party. So I left it until this year to participate. But essentially under the fantasy section of Reddit, there is a bingo challenge every single year. It runs April 1st to March 31st and there is a bingo board full of prompts to complete you can submit the bingo board when you've finished to like officially complete the challenge but it is essentially designed to push you outside of your comfort zone to maybe pick up some speculative fiction because it includes fantasy, sci-fi, horror and anything that has like a fantastical or speculative element that you potentially wouldn't have reached for if you hadn't have been prompted to do so. It's essentially like a readathon. There are different modes to this. There is regular mode which is what I'm doing. There is hard mode where the prompts are a little bit more strict and then there is hero mode where you have to like review every book that you read on a platform of your choice. I'm just sticking with regular mode for the first time around but we'll see how I feel maybe throughout the year. And then we do also have three rules. So the first rule is that you can only use one book per prompt. You can't double up on any of them. The second one is that you can only include one reread, which I am doing. And the third one, like with the reread, it's because you're supposed to be pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and picking new things. You can't use an author for more than one prompt unless one of those prompts is the short story prompt and then you can use it for another prompt as well so I'm also doing that I'm including a short story by an author and a full length novel. I'll pop the bingo board up on screen so that you guys can take a look before we get started. I will also of course link all of the information, the link to the reddit with all of the information down in my description box if you guys would like to get involved. I have included the full range of genres within this board so we have fantasy, sci-fi and horror and I've also tried to include books that I know that I'm going to be getting to this year or ones that I know are like coming up sometime soon just to give me the best chance of actually finishing it. As you all know I have a goal at the minute to not start too many series so I have used I think about a third of the board maybe less I've included sequels and I have tried to use like standalones and stuff as well and when we go through the board I'm going to be starting at top left and going along the rows to the right and then going down to the next row as we go. So the first prompt for our fantasy bingo 2024 is almost too vague as it is to read a first book in the series. So this one is going to be my reread because I know that I'm going to be reading it in April or I hope to at least and that is The Way of Kings part one by Brandon Sanderson. As you all know I'm making my way through the Cosmere. I've just got up to or I've just finished the third book of Second Era Mistborn and now I'm going into my reread of the Stormlight Archive. So it's really hard to describe this series and actually I'm going to try and be brief as I go through because we have 25 books to talk about but the way that this series starts is not really the plot because things progress quite a lot in like the first and second book but we are essentially surrounding a war between the humans and the Parshendi for valuable resources. There was a peace treaty between the two and the Parshendi assassinated the human king which has kind of reinvigorated the war and now it is personal. So there is magic in here and it gets into that a little bit later on but the setup of this series mainly concerns a war. This is a reread for me. I gave it four stars the first time around but I think because of the specifics of this series that there is potential that I'll rate it a little bit higher the second time around. So I'm really excited to reread this one. The second prompt is an alliterative title and the clarification for this is that the title contains two or more words that start with the same letter. So I'm going to be including another book on my April TBR which is Knock Knock Open Wide by Neil Sharpson. This one is an adult horror set in Ireland about a woman who finds a body on the side of the road and then takes it to a remote location and never speaks about that night again. In the present day we are following her daughter who has an alcoholic mother and she is trying to keep her new partner away from her mother and she also believes that all of the things, all of the bad things and sinister things in her life are to do with a children's TV show and a goat puppet. The next prompt is one that I struggled with a little bit and it is under the surface. So the clarification for this one is a book that has a prominent setting that is either underground or underwater. So I have gone for Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvel which I have owned for such a long time and still have not read. I'm not sure how much of this is set underground 
underground but I know that the catalyst of this story deals with something that is underground because this is about a girl who is riding her bike when she falls into a hole and finds like a giant metal robot hand and then in the future when she's an adult she dedicates her life to excavating these parts to kind of see what they are and where they came from. I will be going the audiobook route with this because it is a full cast audio and it is told in transcripts but I think because the main character is dedicated to finding all of these pieces that a lot of time will be spent excavating the things that are underground. That is what I assume anyway. For Criminals, The Clarification is a book that has a character that's like an assassin or a thief and it like jokingly says like somebody committed mail fraud. So I feel like this one does count because I've included Magic Study by Maria V. Snyder. This is another one that I'm going to be reading in April. I've done real well with my April TBR in this challenge. But this is the second book in the Poison Study series which is following a young woman who is about to be executed for the murder of a general's son, making her a criminal criminal even though in my opinion she's justified based on her motives but she is pulled out of the dungeons by the commander's assassin and advisor Valak who then gives her a job as the commander's food tester and she then is taken under his wing and starts to learn about like poisons so that she can do her job better. Meanwhile the fact that she was saved from execution does have its consequences as she is constantly having to look over her shoulder because the general whose son she's murdered believes that justice has not been served and so he's looking to take matters into his own hands. This one is in a different setting and has moved on a little bit from that but I think the fact that the main character started off as somebody who was being executed for murder counts for this prompt. The next one is dreams and this is just any book that contains dreams. It doesn't even have to be like magic dreams or dreams and prophecy, just literally anything that contains dreams. So based on the rest of the series I have gone with I think it's Winter's Heart by Robert Jordan for this which is book nine in the Wheel of Time series. I believe that specifically Rand has recurrent nightmares throughout here but he's not the only character that dreams. Whether there's dreams in this book specifically I'm not sure but I am going to be reading the rest of the series I think within this year period up until the bingo board finishes. So I feel like it counts and Wheel of Time as I'm sure you all know is a classic struggle between dark and light where every age the same things happen over and over again and as the ages have gone on the world has been tipping further towards the dark. In this series we are following This Age's Dragon Reborn who is an influential figure in this eternal struggle between light and dark as he hopefully tips these scales towards the side of good forever. The first prompt on the second row is Entitled Animals and this is to read a book that has the name of an animal in the title. So I had a couple of options but for this one I'm going for Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. I actually do not remember what this is about. I got it in a subscription box. I just know it's gothic. So I just realised that this would actually fit for another prompt if I did choose to use it for that instead. But for the Entitled Animals prompt it obviously has Starling in it and it is a gothic story about a mysterious mansion in a small town and our main character goes to work there to try and secure a better future for her brother and kind of gets embroiled in the like mysterious nature of this house and also the brooding air. Sounds right up my alley if I'm being honest even though nothing else from Alexi e. Harrow has ever really appealed to me. I feel like this one might be the one. The next prompt is Bards and I did have a few options for this so this one isn't necessarily, none of these are set in stone actually. If I read anything that isn't on this TBR that fits really well for the prompt I will just swap them out but the full prompt for this is a book with a prominent character that is I think it's a bard, a musician, a poet or a storyteller. So I've gone straight up for a bard and I've picked A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. So from what I remember this one is set on an island where they summon a bard to come to the island to banish the sprites. Do they like the sprites? The spirits only answer to a bard's music so somebody has invited a bard that used to live on the island back to try and rid the island of spirits. The reason why I'm so hesitant about this one, I would say that this is the one on the TBR that I'm least inclined to want to read and that is because I didn't love Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross but I do own this because I think I got it in an Illuma crate so I do want to give it a try and if nothing else this will get this book off my TBR. The next prompt is prologues and epilogues so it is a book that has either a prologue or an epilogue but hard mode is that it has both and for this one I've picked Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I'm really excited about this one. This is the sequel to Gideon the Ninth which is a sci-fi fantasy that is set on 
a series of planets and each planet, I think the planets, each planet is one of the houses of necromancy. One day a letter arrives at ninth house inviting the heir of the house and what are they called? Is it cavaliers? And the heir's cavalier to go to first house to participate in some sort of test to become this like legendary immortal warrior. So Gideon is somebody who has been raised in ninth house but hates everybody and everything to do with it and she is trying to escape when Harrow tells her that if Gideon goes as her cavalier then she will get the notoriety that she needs to like make a name for herself in the solar system and then she can have her freedom. I really loved book one and I'm really interested to see where book two takes it. I also really love Harrow. I think Harrow is my favourite character. The next prompt is a self-published or indie published fantasy and for this one I have gone with the first book in the series that my Patreon book club is going to be starting. I do fantasy romance full series read-alongs on there and we are going to be starting The War of Lost Hearts by Carissa Broadbent, the first book of which is called Daughter of No Worlds. I don't really know too much about what this one is about but I believe our main character is a slave that buys her freedom and then she wants to save her best friend who is also enslaved so she goes to this like esteemed order of mages and to gain entrance to their community she has to train under a fire wielder who I think is the love interest in this one. This one leads very nicely to another book that I'm hoping to read in April. The prompt for this one is Romanticy and for that I'm going to be picking up A Game of Fate by Scarlett St. Clair. This one is the first book in the Hades saga. There is the Persephone and Hades series and the Hades saga and you alternate between the two their interconnecting series so it goes A Touch of Darkness, A Game of Fate and then the other book in the Persephone series, the other book in the Hades series. The reason why I'm reading this is because I'm going to be going to a Scarlet St. Clair event in London in the middle of April. So this is a last minute addition to my TBR. I liked book one, I really liked it. So I've been excited to continue for quite some time, but I didn't want to start a new series, which this technically is, which really like put me off. So that really like put a spanner in the works, but I'm going to be continuing this month. And the Persephone and Hades series is about Persephone who has gone to, I think she's into or working as a journalist and she goes to this club that Hades runs and he teaches her how to play poker but he doesn't tell her that if she loses he's going to pull her into a bargain which he does and he says that she can have her freedom if she can create life in the underworld but Persephone actually can't harness her goddess's spring powers and for some reason that she doesn't know everything she touches withers and dies. I'm excited to get into the Hades one because I've heard that this one has more fantasy plot while the Persephone series is more contemporary fantasy but mainly romantic. This one has a lot more of like a fantasy plot line. The first prompt on row three is Dark Academia and for this I would like to carry on with the Atlas series by Olivia Blake. I read the first book a couple of years ago and I have yet to continue to book two. I've already ordered book three as well. But the Atlas six is about six very talented magicians who are like outstanding members of their field who are invited to join the Alexandrian Society, which is a secret society by a mysterious guy called Atlas Blakely. But what they don't realize is that actually only five of them are going to be joining the Atlas Society and one of them is not. So they expect to compete in a series of trials to determine the winners but that never happens they're kind of left to their own devices for a year when a decision is going to be made about who makes it through. So I loved especially the end of the Atlas 6. I'm really excited to get into the sequel. I just haven't yet. <laughs> For a book that is multi-POV, I am sure that this is, I'm sure that the first book in this duology is. I flicked through this one and it doesn't have like perspective names at the top of the chapters, but I'm sure that it's multi-POV. And that is We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal. So I read book one last year and I loved it. This one is set in a world where something has happened that has changed like the climate of all of the different areas. And in the middle is this massive impenetrable forest because the climate has changed everywhere everybody's struggling to be able to survive because they're living in conditions that they're not used to. So enter the huntress who is the only person who is able to hunt in this forest. The sultan hears about 
at this and he sends her to find this magical artifact that he tells her will set the world to right so that everybody can like survive and thrive as they used to. However, it's a magical artifact that he wants for himself. So he sends his son who is an assassin after the Huntress to kill her when she's found the artifact and then take it for himself. There is a romance in here <laughs> and I liked it a lot. So I'm really, this is one that I wanted to read for a long time and I just haven't got around to it. And hopefully this will make sure that I do. The Center Prompt is a book that was published in 2024 and I had a lot of options for this, but I decided to go for Empire of the Damned by J. Kristoff, which is the sequel to Empire of the Vampire. So in book one, we are following a guy called Gabriel who is a silver saint, which is a vampire hunter. And he has been captured by the vampires. He's about to be executed. And in Name of the Wind style, they tell him that they would like to hear his life story so they can record it for ages to come. So he then starts to narrate his story from a couple of different points in time. The first point is like his childhood and him growing up and how he joined the Silver Saints. And then the second timeline is him hunting for the Holy Grail, which is a like mysterious and powerful artifact. And then we have the third timeline, which is the present day where he's telling his story. The next prompt is a character with a disability. So I'm going to be going with a book that is not released yet. I believe that it's coming out in August or September. And that is The Ending Fire by Sarah L. Arifi. So this one is the third book in the Ending Fire trilogy. And this one is set in a world where people are segregated by the color of their bloods. So we have the red bloods who are the nobility and the important people. You have the blue bloods who are kind of the working class, but they're not treated quite that well. And then you have the translucent bloods who are the servants and essentially the peasants of the world. Like they're very oppressed. Way back in the history of this world, about 20 years ish before the story starts, there was a rebellion that stole children from the red bloods and transplanted them with blue blooded babies. And the intention was that these, this blue blooded rebellion would raise these red children to understand the oppression faced by the people with blue and translucent blood. And then they would enter these children into a series of trials that decides the next leaders of the world. These children would come into power and they would change the societal structure. So we're following three characters in this story. We're following the daughter of the leader of this society. We are following a young woman who was one of the red blooded babies raised amongst the blue bloods. And we are following one of the translucent blooded people. They're being punished for a rebellion where they try to over throughout the society. So all of the children have had their tongues cut out and their hands cut off so that they cannot rebel again in the future. I loved book one and two and based on where book two elevates the plot, I'm so excited for book three to be released. The next prompt really hurt me because it is a book published in the 90s. And as you'll know, I've been reading Wheel of Time. The next book that I'll be picking up is book nine and book nine is published in the year 2000 and I'm still mad about it. But I did manage to find an alternative and that is Daughter of the Blood by Anne Bishop. This is one that I've had for a long time because it's a series that inspired Sarah J Maas, who's one of my favorite authors. I don't know too much about it aside from that it concerns witches and that it has a prophecy about a queen who is going to be the most powerful queen of all time. And I do believe that it is classed as like being pretty dark as well. The next prompt is orcs, goblins and trolls. Oh my, that is to read a book that has an orc, a troll or a goblin as part of the story or as like the main character. So for that one, I'm going to be reading Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This one is the cozy fantasy that everybody has been talking about for the last couple of years. All I know is the bare bones of the plot and that is that we are following an orc who is like a mercenary or was a mercenary or a barbarian that has decided to settle down and open a coffee shop. The next prompt is space opera. And this one is not a conventional space opera. There is nothing in the synopsis that implies that it's a space opera, but 43 people have shelved it as space opera on Goodreads. And I also believe that some part of it is to do with space travel. And that is The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. So this is one that Aaron told me to pick up when I was in New York. So I did. The synopsis is super vague. I believe it's set in space. The synopsis, I will just read it to you because it just says, a solitary ship captain unfettered from time, a mute child burdened with unimaginable power, a millennia old woman haunted by lifetimes of mistakes. In this captivating debut of connection across space and time, these outsiders will find in one another the things they lack, a place of love and belonging, a safe haven 
even a new beginning. Literally, that could mean absolutely anything. I do know that Simon Jimenez's new book has been very highly rated though, and I do want to get to that, but first I need to get to this one. The next prompt is an author of colour, so I've popped in another sequel, which is The Blood Gift by N.E. Davenport. This is the second book in a duology that has been compared to Red Rising, following a young woman who was supposed to be training to become one of the elite warriors in her society. It's set on some sort of planet and she has decided to take some time out because she is mourning the death of her grandfather. When she's decided to do this, her grandfather's closest friend comes to her and says, I actually think that your grandfather was murdered. And so she then rededicates herself to this trial to become this elite warrior as one of the leaders of the people training the warriors is the person that her father's advisor suspects of being her grandfather's murderer. I have been put off this one a little bit because I haven't heard great things about it, but I would, like I did really like book one, even though I felt like it should have been three books instead of two and like stretched out a bit more. Um, I do want to give book two a chance. The next prompt is survival. And that is a book where the primary focus of the plot is trying to survive in some way. So for this one, I've gone for The Kiss of Deception, which is book one in The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. This one is on my 24 books to read in 2024, which is why I wanted to include it. And this one is following a, I think she's a princess who is running away from her wedding and two people are pursuing her. One is the prince that she was supposed to marry and one is an assassin that has been sent out to kill her, but we don't know which one is which. Now, I don't know whether the only reason why she's running away from her wedding is because she doesn't want to marry this guy, but I do know that there is going to be an element of survival there because one of the people chasing her is an assassin. The next prompt is to judge a book by its cover or essentially pick a book because you like how it looks. And for that one, I've gone for The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chokshi. I always struggle to see this one. This one is the Fairy Loot edition and the reason why I love it so much is because of the dual toned colour palette. I know very little about this one. I do know that it's gothic, which I love. I know that it's a standalone and I believe it's following a married couple who have to return to the bride's childhood home when one of her family members are dying. And one of the conditions of the wedding is that her husband never pries into her past, but as they return to her childhood home, he does. And I know that the disappearance of her childhood best friend is also an element of this. I don't know any further than that. The next one is set in a small town, so a book that takes place in a small town. So I've gone with the like smallest small towny vibe book that I know of, which is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I have read other books by Grady Hendrix and really enjoyed them and I've been excited to get to this one for a long time. This one is set in a small southern town and it is about a vampire that comes to town and starts to shake things up and starts to like really ingratiate himself within the main character's life. And I think that with her book club, she starts to believe that there's something really sinister about this vampire. They don't know that he's a vampire and I'm assuming that they are going to try try slaying a vampire for themselves eventually. I know that the main horror of this is that it is a critique on small towns and like the small town mindset. So I believe that there is a lot of racism in here as well. And that's kind of like the main topic at the core of this book. The next prompt is the only one that I haven't filled and that is a five short stories. So it is to read five short stories. They don't have to be by the same author. And that's the reason why I've left them blank. I know that I have a Mistborn short story. It's the last one in the Arcanum Unbounded that I need to read by Brandon Sanderson. I think, is it The Secret History? Which I'm definitely going to be reading soon because I need to read it before Way of Kings. And I also, if I decide to continue with the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson, I have two short stories left in the novella collection. Aside from that, I'm going to leave it open. I don't like short stories, which is why this is difficult for me to fill. I don't really have many, but I'm sure that I will find some along the way that I can read for this prompt. The next prompt is Eldritch Creatures. And this one really threw me because I really just did not know what counted. The description on Reddit is, read a book featuring a being that is uncanny, unearthly, and weird. This can be a god or monster from another plane or realm and is usually beyond mortal understanding. So I don't know if this does contain eldritch creatures, but I feel like it has a good chance. And that is volume two of the Die comic series. So volume one is about six 
teenagers that are about to start an RPG game. It's one of their birthdays. He goes over to his friend's house with his baby sister where he meets his like tabletop RPG crew. This guy whose house he's at says that he has made up an RPG for this character's birthday. So he assigns them all die and on their first roll they are transported to a fantasy world. Two years later they reappear in the real world but there's only five of them. One of them has been left behind and they can't say anything about where they've been. So 28 years passes and the main character Dominic receives a d20 for his birthday so he gets the gang together to kind of discuss what this could be about and once again they are all transported back into the fantasy world where they take up the role of the characters that they created especially for this campaign. With this being it's not D&D &D, but with it concerning tabletop RPGs I feel like if anything has the chance of containing something that could be considered an eldritch creature this has as good a chance as anything. The next prompt is reference materials. I was stuck on this one for a little bit because it's anything that contains like a glossary, a dramatis personae, a pronunciation guide, any kind of additional material that goes alongside the book. So I was thinking like epic fantasy, I was thinking like Stormlight, Malice by John Gwynn, like Malazan, and actually Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness has a dramatis personae and I'm so happy about that because with me consistently reading so much high and epic fantasy for book clubs, I don't want to start too many new series until I finish some. So this one is the second book in a Discovery of Witches series, which is essentially Twilight for adults. We're following a historian called Diane Diana, yes, who accidentally retrieves a manuscript from the library of the university and she just like, she's looking for information, it doesn't contain what she needs so she sends it back. Diana's a witch but she doesn't really practice and every time she returns to the library to continue her research she notices that more witches, demons and vampires are turning up and kind of staring at her. One of these is Matthew who is an ancient vampire who is also interested in this manuscript which turns out to have been lost centuries ago but for some reason and she was able to call it forward. So all of these demons, witches and vampires are wanting her to call out the manuscript again and give it to them. So as this becomes more dangerous because these creatures become more desperate for the manuscript, Matthew takes it upon himself to protect her and uncover the mystery of the manuscript and why she is the one who is able to call it. And then the final book is one for a book club or read along. So I have gone with the next catch up book club book, which is my epic fantasy read along book club. And I'm going Going to be reading A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie. So this is the first book in the Age of Madness series which is the second trilogy within the first lot world. All I know is that it is a generational story so it follows some of the children from the earlier trilogy. I'm expecting to see some of the characters from the standalones that we've seen in the last few books and it is a grimdark fantasy where the core plot is that we are following the little people trying to muddle through and solve a plot that is, they're not even trying to solve a plot, they're kind of being dragged along at the whim of an immortal who is doing something bigger in the background that nobody quite understands. That's the best way that I can describe First Law to you guys. So there you have the almost 25 books because I didn't fill in the short stories but there you have all of the books that I hope to read for the 2024 round of our fantasy bingo. Like I said in the middle there, these are not set in stone. If I read something unexpectedly, which I often do, I don't really follow TBRs at the minute, I will fit those in where I can to give myself obviously the best chance of actually completing this. I do hope that I do get to read a lot of these books for the prompts and as you noticed a lot of them are books that I plan on reading very soon anyway. In recent years I've gone from somebody who follows a set TBR to being a little more fluid so don't be surprised. I, am, I do think I'm going to do a check-in maybe at the end of March next year um, to see how I did but don't be surprised if some of the books that I used to fulfill the prompts are not the books that you saw in this video. So down in the comments let me know, recommend me a book actually just in case the die series, one of the volumes in the die series does not count, recommend me a book that contains or that you think contains eldritch creatures in case I need to swap that one out because I just I don't know what counts as an eldritch creature explicitly you know because I'm like super pedantic so if it doesn't say it's an eldritch creature I'm going to be losing my mind trying to figure out what is classed as an eldritch creature and what isn't so help me out also let me know if you think that Gideon and Harrow like that series, the Locked Tomb series, counts as one containing eldritch creatures if you've read it because I'm unsure about that one. Also let me know if you're planning on participating in our fantasy bingo this year and if you guys would like to let me know that you were here but you don't really have much to say then leave a key emoji 
in my comments. Let me just share that that exists. It does. So aside from that guys, please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my bookish candle website, the Etsy for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns hidden under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.